Thursday, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Welcome on the show. My name is Wally Scott. <laughs> Mukael, <laughs> it's something that I'm, I'm impressed with. When we're growing up, I don't know about you though, when I was growing up, the only sports that we knew was football and table tennis. Yes. And you see, football, easy because you just get a ball and mm. all of you all kick it around. Mm -hmm. Table tennis... Just get a plank and a couple of... If it was a plank, if it was good. Most mm. times, most houses that I used to go and visit then, it was on their soccer way. Mm. Just kids. <laughs> Something to demarcate it and then... I remember um, back in secondary school, GSS1, the very first sport that PE teachers taught was uh, table, table tennis. tennis. Uh, football was year two. So uh, those were the only two sports that got us out of the classroom. And you could find people playing football, people playing table tennis everywhere. Anywhere there could be a convert, anything that could be converted. Literally, a slim plank like this could be converted into table tennis. And all you needed were just two uh, small pieces of board. The most critical element was the ping pong. Yeah, the ping -pong after that, you, you plank it does the rest, you mm, know, really. Yeah. But the good news is, and people don't notice that, when mm. it's a football competition mm. these days, a mm. basketball competition, everybody notices. Mm. But table tennis, this is the 15th edition. Now, oh. the 15th ASO Table Tennis Championship will serve off later today, with no fewer than 300 players competing for honors at the national tournament. Now, the annual championship, which holds in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, will feature competitions in cadets, junior and senior categories. Following the arrival of the players, officials and other delegates on Wednesday, hostilities will begin today at the Gymnastics Hall, Package B, of the MKO Abuja National Stadium in Abuja. Now, speaking of the press conference ahead of the commencement of the tournament, Chairman Asso Table Tennis Championship, Dr. Olushegun Ajumon, said the organizers are delighted to stage the event again this year following the excitement and success of the last edition in 2021. The host also revealed that mouth-watering prizes are on offer for winners in the senior, junior and cadet categories, adding that all the players will be accommodated and fed by the organizers for the period of the tournament organized in conjunction with the Nigerian Table Tennis Federation. Also speaking at the press conference, President of the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation, Engineer Ishaku Tikon, lauded ASO Table Tennis Club's efforts towards the development of the game in the country, stating that the Federation will continue to throw its weight behind the tournament. The sensational Matthew Cutty, who won the MVP at the last edition alongside all the rising youngsters, will be ruffling shoulders in the cadet category when the championship gets on the way, while Aziz Sholanke and Fatima Bello will hope to defend the ticket titles they won last year. The finals and closing ceremony of the tournament is expected to hold on Saturday, May 7th, while players and officials will depart for their various states on Sunday, May the 8th. My presence here symbolizes the good intention of our Sotobu Tennis Club the G20 club, that's my own personal club, will also be having their 11th edition this year, God's willing. And um, you'll be amazed the number of clubs that have spring out in Abuja. It's just for us to, as a federation, to come up with a template and see how we can begin to support them to produce the stars we're expecting, to do at least the one that can come closer to Arena Quadri and the support needed. Like I say again, that is why I'm here. I've seen from preparation level to the starting of the event tomorrow. I will personally be there myself. It's also an avenue to evaluate these young players that are coming up. We have fantastic players in Nigeria. B by B Nigeria is already taking over Africa as a continent in table tennis. We have become a hub of table tennis in Africa. And we are going beyond that now. We are facing the world with what our own is doing now in the world, we now know that our benchmark is no longer Nigeria, it's no longer Africa. We are looking towards the world to take over the world. The intention is to keep it going because before it was just fun, because it was just friends that gathered. But then we extended to states, uh, to schools around, in Abu around Abuja. 
then we said, look, why not? Let's make it state around the FCT. And now it is federal. Um, so we don't intend to stop. And our intention was actually even to say, let it be open. Let anybody that you know, wants to come and compete, compete. But we shifted our focus a little in the last three editions that we want to concentrate more on cadets and the junior so that we can raise them, we can raise, nurture them. Because there are so many people, Nigerians that are gifted in table tennis. But I think time has caught up with them. They can't go, they, they, they are not able to grow. They are good. So we can use them as coaches and trainers to these young ones that we can capture early. And what we have done, why we want to continue to be very close to the Fe National Federation, is that as we discover them, we hand them over. As we discover, discover them, we hand them over. So uh, I'm happy the, the Federation is also seeing our small effort and giving us all the support that we, we do not only just identify them and keep them. As soon as we identify them, we hand them over. So uh, we also expect that very soon it will be international, which means, you know, economy improving else, you know, in Nigeria and elsewhere, people can come from around, from anywhere, in, especially from West Africa. That's our aim. But for the time being, let this simple effort continue to grow in Nigeria. We also hope that if we can influence somebody who will become a sponsor, a regular sponsor, either a bank or individual or uh, industries, we can think of having an academy that we will discover the young ones and we'll keep them in school while they are also improving on table tennis. That is a dream. But for the time being, we'll continue to do what we are doing now. Now, um, the man said initially they were just a group of friends in Abuja who came together mm -hmm. to play table tennis. Mm -hmm. It was just fun. Mm -hmm. But now, 15th year running, um, except for last year because of COVID, um, but this is the 15th edition, and um, now it's federal. He said it, gradually they, they, they actually invited states from mm -hmm. around the FCT, but now it's federal. Everybody, and you, 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 if you can play good table tennis, be there. You know, Absolutely. it's personal responsibility. At this point, we have to accept that the government, the administrations, either do not have the resources, the personnel, or do not have the will uh, to, to ensure that every form of sport that we love, that we, that, uh, that we think of is being taken for granted, they don't have what it takes to really structure it to the best of their abilities. Now personal responsibility, taking, gathering along with friends and saying, let's do something. Let's bring our resources. And even if all we can do is nurture the young, the, those who are in primary school, in secondary school, help them find their path. And maybe one day when the, when the avenue is more, much more open for them, they will be able to be available to represent us on a federal level on an international level and at the very least as individuals we would have ushered and the good, and the, the good a, news is yes. um Aruna Kodri yes um, has become the first African to ever reach first, first African ten. first Nigerian first, first black ten person in ever. the world yes. yes and when you hear stories like that it is it is this kind of program that can help us breed more more Aruna Kodri yes now, the Lagos State Football Association has released a statement condemning the violence during the Nigerian Professional Football League game between MFM FC and Enugu Rangers at the Tesla Balogun Stadium in Lagos on Sunday and vows to punish offenders. The match day 24 involving MFM and Rangers ended in a goalless draw but was marred by violence as video footage and pictures show the match official being manhandled by a fan in Lagos. While the league management company is yet to announce whether any action will be taken against the home side, LSFA has condemned such an act while also apologizing to the law-abiding fans. <laughs> I, 
Ah, Avocat, I'm, I'm sure you should be asking why I'm laughing. My, it goes without saying. We don't, we, we don't have a data mm. in Nigeria. We don't have... The best we can do is to punish the team. Mm. The fan who had attacked mm. the referee, find him for me. Mm. <laughs> find him now, you know? Even in the, be said. In Europe... And I don't want to make this sound like I'm taking it lightly, this offense. Even when it's just words being thrown in the direction, offensive, racist words, even homophobic words, when they are being thrown at players, at coaches, at referees, the individual who throws those words can be found. Yes. There's video footage. They investigate critically. There's police at the venue, and he's escorted out, and he's banned for life. And they go beyond that in certain instances where they decide it's not, it's not enough to ban him from his home stadium. They send his picture around the country well, to ban said him it from well. every... There are footages. There are stewards who are waiting to march him out of the stadium. Mm. We don't have all that here. We don't have all that. And the in technology... In fact, our matches are not even on television. And, you know, that's the number one thing I don't understand because across Africa, even if, let's say, we are spoiled in Nigeria and we don't watch our own football, across Africa, a lot of countries look up to us. True that. And they would w watch our football. So why aren't we doing the bare minimum, the due diligence of airing our matches? Because that's broadcasting right money being True. left on the True. table. And that's money that could be funneled into the league and help improve it, help secure the wages of the players, help avoid the embarrassment of teams owing past due payments and being deducted significant amounts of points, going into administration. That's the kind of thing we can avoid if we just do the bare minimum of airing our own football. It's That's like we're trying to forget that we play football We have in to actually bring us ourselves. Nobody's going to help us do it. We have to do it ourselves. It, it's like they say, if a tree falls down in the forest and there's no one to hear it, did it fall down? There's no point. <sighs> Real Madrid fans erupted in joy as they spilled out of the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium after their side fought back from the brink of elimination to beat what went wrong, Mukail. I... <laughs> what, something must have gone wrong. You know what's ironic? I can't explain it for Man City I was because talking to I was always expecting I was Real talking Madrid to El, El, El Chapo in mm. the creative room and, and I'm talking to him... Um, um, Joe and Tony, mm -hmm. and they were all like, um, it's the curse of Yahya Toure over Guardiola. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> you know, but, 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 the, but the truth be said, what went wrong? Is Guardiola cursed? It, that's one explanation. Another explanation is that on the night, they went up against the greatest Champions League team ever. club in the world ever True in that. history. This is the team that brought dominance and significance to the competition making sure that we till today revere even though it started in the old format of uh european football till today they have 13 champions league titles to their names in the last um decade they've gone four champions league uh finals and won four champions league finals Re the question we'll ask now is, is Pep Guardiola cursed? Let's listen to him. We'll come back. Stay with us. This is a man who looks and talks like he's defeated. If, if Pep Guardiola is cursed, it makes sense to accept that explanation. He has been knocked out of six Champions League Finals. semifinals. No one else has ever experienced that much. And the fact is, you could also say that... If not by the grace of Lionel Messi, he may have never won a Champions League Shoot final that. ever. So, and he's always had the resources, always he's had a, the he's players. A good coach. He's a he's great a coach. coach. He's a fantastic coach. But that extra spirit, some, some managers just have it on lock. Ancelotti has reached his fifth Champions League final. The first coach to ever do it. He has, he has won, won in every, every league. league. Every major European league, five uh, league titles. It's Some managers have a knack for running the marathon and getting 
the gold at the end. Some managers know how to create tactical philosophy that will make your mouth salivate and water and you're just like, oh, this is beautiful football. That is what Guardiola can give you. And along the way, he can win trophies, but when it comes to the Champions League, he's not a master at it. He's still learning work, which well, means he has more work to, to put do, in. Do, do, do. Okay, now um, the Birmingham Commonwealth Games yeah. coming up, and um, students mm -hmm. are the ones who actually, students are in, in, in jewelry school, actually were the ones who actually came together to actually create the medals for oh, the events. Wow. That's impressive. So the event was, um, the medals were presented. Now, they were designed locally by students from the City School of Jewelry. The medals will be manufactured by Toye, Cannon and Spencer, a firm based in Birmingham's world-famous jewelry quarter. There were interviews with Amber Alice, who led the design team alongside Francesca Wilcox and Katerina rodriguez Cacero and Hannah Cockfrott, seven-time Paralympic champion who talks about the adjustable ribbon with para athletes in mind and the fact para sports will be integrated with able bodied sports. So, quickly before we go on the show, Mikhail, Stefano Sessipas into the mm. last 16 in the Madrid Open. Mm. He's doing well, uh, but like we've said recently, there, there are no favorites when Wonder. it comes to tennis. Right now, there are no favorites. Djokovic is uh, having his longest period as a world number one, 189 uh, days, I believe. And um, obviously, Nadal is still <laughs> Nadal. Uh, Federer is the one we're waiting for uh, to get back from his uh, injury yeah. layoff. But um, Sissipas, Medvedev, Rublev, uh, Murray... Um, set up a, a match with uh, with uh, Djokovic. We'll see, but it's always just we should just enjoy the matches because a lot of what I'm seeing is great tennis. Good. Thank you very much, Mukail. The man behind the cameras, Tayo, his name. You can't see him, but he makes you see us. Thank you very much, Kyle the K. I call him. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much, Dami Lola. Thank you very much for the package. Thank you very much, downstairs, the powerhouse. Peter, I call him Piro. Thank you very much. Join us same time tomorrow. I'll leave you with Stefano Sissipas. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. <laughs>